Hi, I'm Christine Hanlon from the University of Central Florida. Today what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about Monroe's Motivated Sequence. Monroe's Motivated Sequence is a wonderful organizational pattern that we use for persuasive speeches that are specifically designed for speeches where you want your audience to do something, where you're asking them to take an action. So Monroe's Motivated Sequence was developed back in the 1980s by Monroe. That's why we call it Monroe's Motivated Sequence. Sometimes you'll hear people talk about it and they'll refer to it just as Monroe's or just as Motivated Sequence. It's Monroe's Motivated Sequence. It has five steps to it. They're very easy to follow. The first step of Monroe's Motivated Sequence is the attention step. And the attention step is basically an introduction, okay? The second step in Monroe's Motivated Sequence is the need step. The third is the satisfaction step. And the fourth is the visualization step. And last but certainly not least, and so important, is the action step. Or sometimes they refer to it as the call to action. Now the attention step is similar to what we've seen before. It's basically an introduction. An introduction has five components to it. The first thing that you always, always, always do in an in a introduction is you open with impact. So come out with a big statement, something that gets the audience's attention, something that hooks us. You always want to be a little bit louder in the open with impact than the rest of your speech because you're getting the attention of the audience. So very important to think about that open with impact statement, very first thing you're doing. The other uh, four components of the, the attention step, the middle three can go in any order. The last one is always, always, always a preview of the main points. It's a little bit less important with this particular speech pattern. You don't want to be as um, clear as you would be with an informative speech as you would be with this one. Uh, or excuse me, you, you would want to be clear with an informative speech. You don't have to be as clear with the persuasive pattern using Monroe's. So, but you do want to preview at least vaguely. Um, the three things in the middle of an introduction that always happen. Number one is a thesis statement. Number two is a connect with the audience, the audience connection. The third one is, is speaker credentials, explaining your credibility to the audience. These three things are in the middle of your introduction. So first thing, open with impact. Last thing, preview of the main points. These three in the middle, you can change the order. It can go whatever order you want for the thesis, the audience connection, and the speaker credentials. The important thing is that you have them there. You want to change the order of those up to depend on what makes the most sense for your presentation with your Open With Impact and how that leads into your main points. But the attention step, all it is, is an introduction. Same thing that we've done with informative speeches, same thing that we do with other persuasive speeches. Nothing big there, just fancy name, attention, very fancy, um, for the first step of the sequence. These middle steps here, these three right here, this is actually the body of your speech. So if you're thinking about this kind of from the frame of an informative speech, is that um, this is the body. So these are your three main points. So not a whole lot has changed with this either. Um, you have three main points, and like I always say, American audiences love the number three. You want to have three main points for your speech. You want to say them three times during your speech. Say them once during the introduction, when you uh, preview your main points, say them another time during the body of the speech when you're explaining each one in further, further detail, and then you want to say it a final time during the action step when you're restating the uh, three point, their main points in the, the conclusion, and that's all really action step is, is a conclusion. But let's talk about the body of the speech. So we've got main point one, main point two, and main point three. These always go in this order. You cannot change the order of Monroe's motivated sequence. That's really important. Um, there's been a lot of research about that where people have switched up the order. does not work as well. The need step, all the need step is, is an a, a explanation of the problem. So really, this is the problem step. So when you're thinking about problem solution pattern for persuasive speaking, that's the need step, that problem step and problem solution. Same thing as the need. So you're defining what the problem is. You're explaining why the problem is something that's important. You're relating it to the audience, explaining why we need to care about this problem. So you want to make sure that you have strong audience connection in the need step. One thing that you'll also see in the need step is this huge need for oral citations. 
You need to have balanced oral citations. Make sure that they're from lots of different sources. Make sure they're from both internal and external sources. Internal meaning from within the organization that you're speaking on behalf of. And external meaning that they're from other sources um, that you can pull from. Other research sources, maybe the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, things of that nature. So um, thinking about balancing those sources. But you're going to have lots of sources here. In the past, I've talked to people about the importance of um, being aware of uh, citation clumping, where you have all of your oral citations supporting one main point. In this particular pattern, it lends itself to citation clumping. So if you find yourself having most of your oral citations during the need step, perfectly fine. You're good. No problem there. The important thing is you want to firmly establish that we have this need in our society that we need to be concerned about, okay? Something that we need to solve, a problem. You want to very clearly define that related to the audience. The second one is the satisfaction step. And the satisfaction step is where you provide the solution. So problem solution, there we go. Um, you're explaining what exactly you want us to do. And you want to be specific, one single solution. You don't want to provide a whole bunch of different ideas of things that we can do to help the Humane Society. Choose one. You need to narrow and focus to that one thing that you want your audience to do. If you provide us with a bunch of different ideas about how to help the Humane Society, maybe you're going to say donate money, adopt a pet, spay or neuter your own animals. Those are all great ideas, but nobody's going to do them. Okay? I should say nobody. A lot of people aren't going to do them if you provide too many solutions. So when we're talking about the solution, you want to make sure it's nice and narrow. You want to make sure that um, it's something that the, it applies to the audience, that everybody in the audience can do this. It, it relates to us. It's something we can, it's practical that we can do. But you don't want to throw too many ideas at us because if you throw a bunch of ideas at us, what we do as an audience typically is we smile, we nod, we go, oh, these are all great ideas. Yes, yes, we should do this. We should spay and neuter our pets. We should adopt a pet. We should donate to the Humane Society. All important things to do. Do we do anything at all, though, after the speech? No. <laughs> that is a problem. So you want to make sure that you're driving the audience in large numbers to do something. And if you want to do that, you have to narrow it to one single thing that you want us to do. And so that's really the focus of your presentation, this solution that you want us to implement. The third main point in Monroe's Motivated Sequence is really simple, and a lot of times people get confused by this whole visualization step. All it is is where you're imagining the solution as reality. And I should say that there are three different ways to, to go about the visualization. That's one of them. That's called the positive method. So there are three methods for, for using the visualization step. You've got the positive method, the contrast method, and the negative method. So I'll talk about the, the positive method first. Positive is, is really effective. It's where you talk about the solution in action. We have done this. What has happened? How is society better? How do you feel better about yourself, about your engagement in society um, as a result of putting this solution into reality? And so you want to make sure that, that you think about how this is going to affect the audience, how people are going to implement it, how they're going to be affected by it with the vis visualization step. And then you want to explain that to the audience. The important thing, the, the important thing with the visualization step, no matter which, um, which method you use, you always start out with a word that prompts people to visualize. So that could be imagine. It could be visualize. It could be picture this. So it's making us create an image in our brain where we see this, where we imagine it as reality. Um, so visualization step, first, first way to do it, positive method, talking about positive solutions. You're a good audience. You've put the solution into action. This is how we're, we're going to make things better. Um, second way to do the visualization step, negative. So this is where you say, imagine you decided that, you know, you listened to my speech today, but you don't have time for that. I, I just don't have time to go and help this organization. I'm just, I, I just can't do that. And you dismiss me. Well, what happens now? And so it's kind of beating somebody with a stick. So you're saying, so imagine, you say, oh, it'd be a great idea to go and adopt a pet. But you think, you know, I don't, you know, I don't want to deal with a pet. Pet's just not useful. And you're kind of selfish like that. You just don't want a pet. And I don't want to deal with all that. And I don't have time for that. It's not a good thing. And it, it creates this very negative picture of the audience. And the audience usually does not react well to the negative method. They get defensive. 
and they get angry with the speaker, oftentimes, be careful. I would not use the negative method. That is the least effective of the three ways that you can use a visualization step. The only reason I even talk about the negative method is because it is helpful in explaining the contrast method. Contrast method is very simple. You're contrasting the negative and the positive. The important thing with the, the contrast method, though, is you always want to start with the negative, make it short. Don't get too much into it. Don't get the audience angry with you. Before they have a chance to get angry, go say, no, that's not the type of person you are. You're not like that. You're not going to do that. And switch into that positive and say, this is the type of person you are, and this is what you did, and this is how it changed, okay? So it has a much nicer appeal to it. So we've got three methods for the visualization step, always starting with a word that prompts us to think about this solution, okay? Whether or not we, we put it in reality or not. But thinking about how we use this solution, how we think about this speech, always starting with a word like visualize, picture this, imagine, um, three different ways to do it, positive, negative, which I would not recommend, and contrast method. Um, positive and contrast method, very effective methods to use. Again, contrast method, make sure that that negative part's real short. You don't want to get the audience angry with you. The last part of Monroe's motivated sequence is a conclusion, but it's a conclusion with a nice twist to it, so do keep that in mind. The action step or call to action, which is often um, mentioned um, as this particular step, um, is a conclusion. It has the same components as a conclusion for the informative speech. So you're going to restate your thesis. You're going to restate your main points. You're going to create closure. You're possibly going to recircle to that open with impact, which creates that beautiful circular feeling. And it's like, ah, oh, this nice sense of closure is a good thing. But the important thing about the action step is you don't stop there. You add one more thing. And this is what makes it an action step and not just a conclusion. And this is really what makes it a persuasive speech, okay? So when you have this, this action at the end where the last thing that you should say is you should say the re what exactly you want us to do. You want to be forceful. You want to create urgency, why we need to do this now. And you want to tell us, we're all going to do this and we're going to do it today, okay? And you always want to get a little bit more energetic and a little bit louder. So with an informative speech, we often have this pattern of um, like the energy level of a speech where let's say this is the um, beginning of the speech, this is the end, and here we have the energy level. Energy, did that get on the screen? Energy. There we go, that's better. Um, so we got the energy level. With a um, informative speech, what we often have, and the informative I'm gonna do in green, um, is at the beginning of the speech, it starts high because you're open with impact. You have a lot of high energy, high impacts up, and it kind of goes like that. And that's kind of the energy level, kind of mm, in the end. And it has this nice at the end. With the persuasive speech, particularly with Monroe's, I'm going to use pink to demonstrate the energy level of Monroe's, you want to start high, and then you're going to kind of dip in the middle during your main points, and then you're going to end higher than you started with. You're gonna end with more energy, you're gonna use larger gestures, you're gonna be louder in the end than you are in the beginning. Okay, so you wanna think about the energy level and that important thing makes it an action step. You're creating urgency, you're telling us to do it now, you're ending up really high. Um, and, I'll, and I'll show you some examples of that so you can see that action step in action um, and make sure that you've got that, that good to go. But keep in mind that without that call to action, at the very end, that last thing you do, this is really an informative speech. You have to have that last part, that, that, that creating urgency, making sure that you're being a little bit forceful, excited, getting the audience motivated. If you don't have that, you basically have an informative speech. So you have to have it. Um, and when I say well, you have an informative speech, you're informing, let's go through it real quick. We've got an attention step. Same thing as the informative speech. We've got three main points. One, you're informing the audience about the problem. Two, you're informing the audience about the solution. Three, you're telling us the consequences of action versus inaction. That's informative. You get an action step, you're restating your thesis, you're restating your main points, you're creating closure. Informative, what makes it persuasive is that persuasive 
that persuasive call to action that's the very last thing you do. So that is absolutely critical for making this particular pattern work. So hopefully you've, you've learned a lot about Monroe's Motivated Sequence and you can put all of this into action and have a really fantastic speech experience. Get the audience motivated, get them to really act upon what you need them to do and be successful in your presentation.